Now I want to talk about a kind of uh, shift reduced parsing that is top to bottom. Because most of the shift reduced methods are bottom to top. Now I want to introduce an article that has implemented top to bottom shift reduce algorithm. You know, we have two, we have three approaches to uh, any kind of parsing, semantic parsing, constituency parsing, dependency parsing. Uh, either you are going to use graph-based algorithm, so you calculate score, and after that you create, a, for inference, you do CKY algorithm. Uh, or you are going to use uh, shift reduced transient based approaches, transient based approaches, such as shift reduced. It doesn't need a uh, CKY algorithm. It's very fast, but uh, it may it may not be robust because uh, after all, a graph algorithm are the most robust algorithm. And finally, we have uh, neurons, we can uh, sequence, we can see the problem of parsing as a sequence to sequence modeling, like machine translation. And uh, many of the parsers are like this, but you know, it, this has a problem. It's not composition, uh, compositional. It's not. Because it's not compositional, that's why people uh, want to uh, create. For example, they want to use the paradigms of either CCG, combinatory categorical grammar, I have a playlist about this, or CFG, context-free grammar, I have a playlist about this as well. Of course, both of them has a probabilistic, probabilistic CCG and probabilistic context-free grammar. But if you use this, if you want to use these grammars, then uh, these ideas, these are something like top to bottom. So, for example, in this lecture, because I want to uh, explain this article, this article is top to bottom. So it's good for grammars. And uh, so we have this constituency parsing problem. You know, you can linearize it like this and give it to a sequence to sequence model. Uh, so it's, you think yeah, it's very easy, but it cannot do uh, compositional things. So at at the inference time, you see that uh, it can only understand things that are similar to the things that you have given in the, at the training time. So it's not creative. But this article is shift reduce parsing. It's creative because it's it's doing parsing in a fast way. It doesn't need CKY algorithm because it's not graph-based algorithm. It's just transient-based approach. But a kind of transient-based approach that is top-down. So it is inspired by this article, localizing syntactic and also grammar as a foreign language. And so what is recurring neural network grammar? We say it uh, operates via a recursive syntactic proxies, just like pluralistic context-free grammar. But decisions are par parameterized using RNNs because we have some decisions such as shift it, reduce it, or, or another thing that it is introduced in this paper. And so why recurrent neural? So the foundation of this work is a top-down variant of transition-based parsing. So there are several, as I said, there are several transition-based exist that are that are using uh, left corners, shift reduce, but they're bottom-up fashion. But this approach is uh, is good. I mean, bottom-up is good because inference is relatively straightforward. But it has a problem. It limits the, the use of top-down grammar. Because if you want to use, for example, CFG, context-free grammar, it's top-down. So it's not good for that. Even, even it is not good for generation, if you know language generation and those things. Uh, so... It maintains the algorithmic convenience of transition-based parsing, but incorporate top-down, I mean, going from a root to the terminals. 
So the formal definition, like this, we have non-terminals. These are non-terminals. We have a set of uh, terminals. See, no, these are terminal symbols. And we have some rules. For example, but we, def we don't define the rules explicitly in this article. So the top-down parsing uh, algorithm relies on a stack data structure. You know, in shift reduce, we have this stack. And this is buffer. So when, when, when we say shift, it means shift, shift it here. Or we say reduce right, reduce left, if you remember from that classical shift reduce. But here we are doing something uh, interesting. We are going to from top to bottom. And so there are parser transitions. You know these shift reduce. I don't, I don't repeat it. But we have m one more action, which is nt of x. nt of x introduces an open non-terminal. Non-terminal. Open non-terminal x. For example, you say uh, verb phase and then something. You, you will say it later, web phase, something. So this is a kind of non-terminal action that you should do. Because it uh, uh, open non-terminals are written as non-terminal symbols preceded by an open parenthesis, for example, web phase, and they represent a non-terminal whose child nodes have not yet been fully constructed. Open non-terminals are closed to form complete constituents by subsequent reduce operations. And, and you know the classical shift reduce is that you shift it, you sh you re it removes a terminal symbol from the front of the, uh, this buffer to the, pushes it into this stack. So this is the stack, it pushes it into that. And so we have, you're using some constraints, constraints on parser transitions. For example, the NT operation can only be applied if buffer is non-empty. Shift can only, so these are some uh, reasonable things. So, or even in the generation. So these are reasonable constraints that we have to apply. Otherwise it doesn't work. And so the transition sequences from the trees look like this. We have a stack, for example, here we have a sentence and start of the sentence, and then you add, and then the buffer. So the the action that you choose, is, for example, the first step is nt, then you shift it, then you reduce it. And this is the stack at time t plus 1. This is at time t, this is at time, so it goes to time t plus 1. Same for buffer. Buffer at time t, there is a dynamics goes to buffer at time t plus fun. Same for open n as nt. Open nt. And so we have, uh, we have three things to identify the configuration, stack, buffer, and action. For example, for the word, the hungry cat muse, first everything is in the stack. You see, this is very full. Everything is in buffer, everything is full, and the stack is empty. Then the stack becomes full and uh, the buffer reduces until it becomes null, nothing. And then it converges. Then it, it stops, the algorithm stops. So what you need to know is the stack and the buffer and this is the history, let's call it this one, HT. And knowing the history in the stack and the output buffer, you concatenate it, you give it to a linear parameter, a linear layer, you just add a bias linear learning parameter. And finally, a nonlinear activation, which is 10, 10 edge. So U of T is ready. U of T is ready. Now, because R of A is the action-specific embedding, it's like any kind of embedding that you know. We have three, three actions and they're embedding. We can either learn the embedding end-to-end uh, uh, -end, 
or we can have some pre-trained embedding. But it's so simple. We have just three, three actions. And now we get the probability of action given the history. So we understand what is the next action. For example, when the next action is reduce, maybe the next action is generate or empty or anything. So the generative model looks like this. Because this one is equal to this one, so at different times, uh, at different times, we have different actions. So action is like a trajectory. First shift, then reduce, then what, then what. So this is a trajectory. So this trajectory defines, so we have very uh, cleverly defined this um, this as a generative model. We, we now know. We, you may think that we have P of X and Y, but it's very hard to calculate the denominator. That's why when you want to, uh, when you want to remove the ambiguity, and for the we use um, this important sampling. I will explain later to deal with that. But okay, I was saying that it goes to shift and reduce, and and suddenly, suddenly something happens. It understands that N P is U V and W. But how do you encode that uh, to make it a composite thing so that in the next steps it understand that this is one, one, one single composite thing? So in order to do that, uh, they use a very interesting idea. It's, uh, it's they're using bidirectional LSTM, but they give this head to the, to the backward. So it, uh, the forward and backward are the same, but it picks, it picks this one from the backward, it takes this one from the, from the forward and then uh, uses this tan edge nonlinearity and then it becomes, uh, so, it, so then it becomes a good embedding. This X is a good embedding of, of the whole subtree. And so it is depicted here. And as I said, the inference is done by important sampling because you know the denominator denominator is difficult as you know for example in Markov chain Monte Carlo everything we do in computational statistics we have something just like machine learning the denominator is most of the time intractable that's why we approximate that and what is good approximation here is important sampling. For important sampling, you know we need a proposal distribution. And these are important weights. And, and now we have a good representation of P of X, marginal distribution. But you know, we don't do it like this. We always approximate the Monte Carlo of this, of this. So the Monte Carlo of this becomes this. Because the expectation, we can always approximate it with this Monte Carlo estimate. And now we have that. And so we have done the inference as well. Uh, these are also great articles, a minimal span. It, this article has many citations because it's very essential. Many people just use different variants of this. This article says parting, you can think as a language modeling. You know, in, we have great advances in language modeling, so we can use it. So, so that's the idea of sequence to sequence, that uh, uh, people like Percy Leung and those people in Stanford, they use it. And uh, this article is nice by Dan Klein. Uh, and there is another interesting article which is phase aware unsupervised constituency parsing, which is very interesting.